My name is Lucy Aida, and this is Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Today I'm going to show you a simple mountain scene um, from some of the methods that I've learned from Wilson Bickford, who's a wonderful artist in uh, upstate New York in the Adirondack Mountains. And today I will be using his products, and um, this is my easel for today. These, uh, sorry, my... Um, my palette colors for today. And I have titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, Van Dyke brown, raw sienna, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and sap green. I may or may not use all of these colors in this painting today, but I put them out just in case. So what I've already done today to save time, I have put on some fast flow white on my canvas to lubricate it so my paint will flow more smoothly. So I put on a very thin layer all around both top and bottom of my canvas. I put a piece of masking tape, um, any kind of cheap masking tape you have from the dollar store is fine. And um, this way it'll help me a little bit with my horizon line. Um, I will be breaking the horizon line and putting some trees in. However, just for a source of reference for me, it makes it a little easier. Um, so I'm gonna get started today. And what I'm going to do first is gonna put in a simple sky and I'm using the same dirty brush. This is a two inch brush. Not that it's dirty, it has the white paint on it. Um, going in some nice, rich ultramarine blue. And I'm tapping the paint into the brush. I want a nice, rich blue sky today. I'm gonna put my palette down and in a circular motion, starting from the top, I'm part, starting to put my color on. And you'll see after a couple minutes, this will already start looking like a sky. I'm leaving pockets just to kind of show maybe a cloud formation or a lighter part of the sky. So right now, I'm gonna go back. I'm going to blend the sky a little bit, make it look a little bit softer, and we'll put some clouds in. I love to do clouds. I think it's one of my favorite favorite methods to use the fan brush to make soft, fluffy clouds, which I did on one of my demos prior. So now I can take my time a little more and have the, the viewer, you all at home, see a little better of how easy this is to learn. So you can probably see now the sky is getting softer. I'm just moving that paint around. If I see too many brush strokes, I'll just go over it a couple more times in the same spot to remove some of those brush strokes. You can see I have all shades of blue, dark blue, light blue, and the white pocket showing through. Okay, do, do a sweep across. I think that looks pretty smooth. I'm simply taking my fan brush, running it through my white, tapping a little in so I can even the paint out in my fan brush. Turning the brush over, you can see I'm kind of squishing that brush around. There we go. Going to blend out the bottom of my clouds. Now I already have some cloud formations already showing, so I don't really need too many clouds. Wiping off my brush again, getting a little more white. And I think I'll put a nice cloud over here. There's that dark blue. And like I said, it already looks like we have clouds on there, so we'll just put a couple of these, just to give it a little bit more interest. All right, so I'm just going back and forth in the bottom, anchoring them a little bit to the sky. They look like they're part of the sky. Now, I'm going to take a mop brush, which is a nice soft brush. I'm gonna sweep up on these clouds. And you will see in a few minutes how they start to look soft and fluffy. I'm sweeping up very lightly. I'm not pushing on the brush at all. Just lifting up. I'm gonna go across. And just make my clouds nice and soft. Now, what I will do is I'm going to peel off my horizon line tape which I, look, I said before, you don't necessarily have to have this horizon line tape, but it makes things a little bit easier. I am going to be putting mountains on now. Just some very simple mountains. Back to my palette again. 
gonna run my brush through a little bit of the blue, and this, this brush is the uh, flat brush, number 10 flat brush, large flat brush. A little bit of blue. I'm going to put a little bit of the Van Dyke brown, and a little bit of white. I'm gonna make kind of a grayish color. I want these mountains to look like they're in the background. So I don't want them too dark. And I don't want them too light either. And I can adjust the color after I put the mountains on, after I step back and take a peek. So I think I'll come back this way now. So when making the mountains, I'm just in my mind envisioning any kind of a, a mountain, mountain shape, what you would think would be like a mountain shape, maybe a little rough. Not so straight, uneven is always better. I'm gonna take my number 10 flat and just filling in these mountains with some of this grayish color. I'm not worried about if it's even and it's even picking up some of the color from the blue underneath and that's fine. We're gonna put some highlights on top and that blue may actually show through and it will end up being some of the shadows. There we go. So we have some, some background mountains. Now I'm just changing the shape. See how I'm pushing the paint around, changing the shape. I kind of like that gray color. I am gonna be putting a little bit of blue on there also. Now I'm gonna show you how we put some highlights on the mountains. I'm taking uh, a palette knife. This is a, a small painting knife. I'm spreading out the white paint. I'm gonna move it around and kind of soften it up a little. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of my cadmium red and I'm gonna get just a little peachy color. So this is a knife mixing. Some people will use the um, brush to mix and you can do that too. Just I'm gonna be slicing this paint across with this knife. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in there also. I'm gonna brighten it up. So I have a peachy yellow color and I'm spreading it out real thin. And with my knife, I'm going to cut across. And I have a little bit of a bead of paint on that knife. I'm gonna put down my palette again. And saying that I, I don't really have a, uh, a light source in my painting, but I'm just gonna say maybe there's more sun coming uh, towards the right. So starting at on the right, I'm gonna dab and pat and put some highlights on my mountain so I can break my mountains up just by going in between them. So I'm just dabbing and patting and dabbing and patting, spreading that paint around. Gonna go back, get another bead, just like I did. Gonna come over to this right side. You can hear it scraping a little, I'm pushing, dabbing and patting. Now, just by putting a little bit of this highlight color, you'll already start to see some of the depth in the painting. Here we go. Put a little on this side, and I'm, I am gonna come in and put some shadows. I'm dabbing and patting, moving the brush, the, sorry, the palette knife back and forth. I always do that. I'm so used to saying brush that I, I call the palette knife a brush. And a little bit more over here. There we go. So I did this part just to give you an idea of where we're going with this. What I would like to do though is I'm thinking I'm gonna have this mountain reflected in water. So what I need to do then is to repeat the sky a little bit in the water, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my, my two inch brush. I'm gonna come into the blue. There was some white already in there. And it doesn't have to be an exact replica of, of the top. So I'm gonna just come and do the same thing on the bottom. We're close to it, like I said, doesn't have to be exact. So I'm gonna come around. I'll even come in and put some clouds in. 
I think it'd be nice to have, have there be some water and some reflection from these mountains today. And this is a fun painting to do. You, you really can't mess this up because you, the oil paint is so versatile. You can go back and change it and move it and change colors and add colors together. And so many people are saying, oh, I can't do oil. You can. This is a wet on wet method and anybody can do this. It just you need a little practice, maybe a little training. Some people could watch uh, videos um, on the internet and learn. Other people have to come to classes. Okay, so here we go. Come across, make sure I get some of those brush strokes out. And now, since I have the sky reflecting in the water, I'm gonna also put those mountains. So I'm gonna do the same thing over, same colors with the uh, blue, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, the same pile I was in before. So I'll come get a little white, make a little more this time. Here's my Van Dyke brown, little blue. There we go, I'm gonna make a, a little bit of gray. Now see that came out a little bit bluer. I'm not sure if you can see that. So all I have to do is I'll take a little more white, move down to this end of the pile, get a little more brown, a little more white, and I'm gonna move it over See, this is a, a, a value here, then I'm trying to make it lighter, the value of the color. So I'm moving it down. Rather than keep mixing more paint in with that blue and making it light blue and keep adding more and more and more, then we have too much paint. So I moved it down and now this looks pretty close to what we started with. Now I'm gonna put my palette down again. Now, my reflection um, from the top of the mountain down to the bottom I can try to get pretty close. It, it, it's kind of hard to, to copy exactly. I'm just gonna mimic. We are gonna distort it, so it's okay if it's not exact, because exact, I am going to distort it. All right, so I don't know. It might be pretty close. Now I'm gonna paint it in, just like we did above, like I did above. And I can always try to shape it a little as I go along. See how smooth that's working? It's working smooth. I have, I have two layers, thin layers of paint underneath, and I'm using what I have to help me. I'm not using any medium, any painter's medium. Um, there's a couple different kind of mediums you can use with oil painting, and we sometimes use it, and we sometimes don't. Since I had that uh, fast flow underneath, that's helping my paint move very nicely, and I don't wanna use too much paint. So I'm kind of pushing a little harder. This way I can get my nice reflection. So here we go, painting in the mountains. This one maybe was a little straighter up top there. And this one I can see here, maybe a little, little straighter there. Same with this one. So like I said, does not have to be the same. I am going to distort it so it looks like their reflection in the water. So the top I'm not distorting, we want those a little clear when we're looking at it, and this bottom will be. So I'm gonna fuzz out the bottom here a little bit. Gonna come up here and just blend a little. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with the palette knife. I'm just gonna even that out a little bit. Going back to my palette knife. Same highlight colors I used up top, I'm gonna use on the bottom. Spreading it out, cutting a bead across, and now it's time to highlight. So, we have our highlight on this side, so here is the reverse. Now again, same thing, I'm not worried if it's not the same. Just wanna get that highlight, sorry, hoping that I'm not putting my hand in the front there. I'll try to turn it back and forth. Just tapping, dragging, tapping and dragging, same way. See, this way it looks a little bit even. Getting a little more paint. Again, coming over to this side, which would be here. Pulling in some, tapping, dragging, tapping, turning my brush around. 
I don't want any too many straight edges there, so I try to distort those a little. Same over here. And I kind of broke that mountain range up too by having it come here. Now on this side, I'm bringing that all the way over. All right, there we go. Not hard at all. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off my knife right now. We're gonna put some shadow on our mountains. I'm going back to my blue. I'm just gonna use this pile I have here because it was a gray already. I'm gonna add some of that blue in. So I'm mixing a little bit of this blue. I know I need a little more, so I'll go back and get more. I can actually take all of this paint. Now, if this color didn't turn out the way I wanted to, I could just start another pile. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker today so you can see it better at home. There we go. A nice dark, well, I should say mid-tone blue. I will come in and put some nice dark on these mountains. So wherever I have the light, I'll put some dark next to it. Some of that gray underneath will show through. And then we'll even come back and do another highlight on top. All right, and I can see I'm already running out of paint there. I underestimated how much paint I was gonna need. And I still have to do the bottom. So I am gonna come back again. I'm gonna take a bigger pile of blue this time. A bigger pile of white, a little bit of that brown. Cause I like how that blue came out with a little bit of brown. And look, that is real, real dark, much darker than I had. But I will need all of this paint. So I'll come back and I'll put a little bit of white in there. There we go, pretty close, uh, we'll see. There we go. As long as it's a darker blue. Oh, and that blue is not the same. So all I have to do is move a little over and that'll give my painting some color harmony. There we go, dabbing, pulling it around, dabbing. Okay. See, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just making it up in my mind as I go along what I think that mountains, what they might look like. Again, I'm gonna put some on the bottom. Now, I don't have to put as much or be as detailed on the bottom since that is going to be the reflection. Just wanna get some in there. And yeah, we still need a little more here. Oh, it's a little gray. I will quickly just make a little bit more color. And I got a little brown tones in there too this time. So there's a little gray, little brown. So I'll come back up here, put a little gray, little brown. Again, for color harmony, for time's sake. Um, I'm not worried too much right now. I really wanna show you the lesson. Uh, so I'm not worried too much if my colors um, are not quite what I might use if I was taking my time. But since I'm adding more color, I'm just coming in and adding some from the color I just made. That'll help with the color harmony of it, of the painting. So here we go, a little bit more. Now, what I wanna do before I put trees on is take some of this white with a little tiny bit of red. I'm gonna come in and put just a little bit of a strong highlight, just a little bit. Really make those mountains pop out a little. Just gonna come put a little on the bottom. See, I'm just turning the knife back and forth. I don't need as much on the bottom. Like I said, I am going to be distorting that. Just a little bit of white here. There we go. Now, I do want to have these come a little together. I want the colors to come a little bit together and I'm just patting the paint in between them. Just patting. Just so there's not that much of a separation between them. Oh, I don't even need to do it down here. I didn't use as much paint. Okay, there we have it. So, what I wanna do now is add the trees. I'm going to be using a one inch scenery brush. 
the Wilson Bickford one inch scenery brush. And I'm going to tap through the raw sienna. Very, very pretty color. I'm just gonna use this raw sienna as it is. Right in the middle here, I'm gonna tap in some trees. I'm covering up my white line that I had there. Okay. Now, what I do in the middle here, I'm going to reflect in the water. Tapping again. I'm doing this a little quickly. Usually a painting like this would probably take about an hour and I'm doing it in half the time. So I am hurrying a little, but I wanna show you how easy this is. And you can see now those mountains in the back look further away. Because now we're putting some trees up front. I'm making, I wanna make them uneven. I am picking up a little bit of that mountain color, but I do wanna go into it. So just tap, tap, tap. Usually we would just use this tip of the brush, but in this case, since I have to watch my timing, I'm using the whole brush just so I can show you how we're doing this. All right, there we go. Now, what I did above, I need to do below. So I'm gonna come, I may even take some of this paint from up there and just move it down. It doesn't have to be as dark because this is going to be the reflection just want to get some of that into that water to show that what is above it is below in the water. Okay, I'm just turning the brushes. I'm getting to the side a little just uh, because I'm standing on the side painting. All right, there we go. So we have some trees, make some a little taller there. Okay, so you can still see my horizon line in the middle here. Here we go. I'm gonna take my brush now, go into a little bit of the darker color. This is called Van Dyke Brown. Very, very nice dark brown color. And I'm gonna put a little bit of brown. Just tapping, tapping, tapping. And this is giving a nice contrast to that raw sienna. There we go. Now I'm gonna come down in the bottom, same thing, get some of that brown in. Okay. Kinda going back and forth a little, because I did start with the dark brown on the side, so when I loaded my brush back up, I'm starting again on that side. So, I suggest that you do find these brushes if you do wanna follow at home, and what you can do is you can stop and start your, um, taping of this, whether it be on YouTube or on demand on EBTV, and you can stop and start and work along with me. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My, my contact information will be at the end, and I'll be happy to help you get started. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe out my brush just a little bit. I do wanna come in and, oops, dripping a little green. This is sap green. I'm just gonna come and I'm gonna place in a little bit of green, break up that brown a little. And see how I'm just pressing now? Because now I want the leaves to show a little bit more detail. There we go. Now you can see how it's kind of separating. Again, I'm gonna come down on the bottom and I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. You can see I'm not not worried so much, more or less just trying to get that color in there. And believe it or not, we're almost done. Oops, got a little bit too much paint on the brush that time. So I'm just gonna tap a little. I will tap a little here. Got a little dark green. So rather than try to scrape that off and fix it, I'll just put a little more on top so it matches. There we go. You can probably see I'm just tapping it in, tapping, tapping. Okay. What I would like to do is I'm gonna take my palette knife. I'm gonna scrape in some, some tree limbs. There we go. I'm just scraping right through, no, no pattern, taller and smaller and taller. 
taller over here and some smaller ones and do the same thing in the bottom. I'm not even trying to match them. You could, if you wanted, you could take the time, say I put one there and there and you can have them be uh, more uniform, but it's okay in this, in this uh, painting, it's okay. I'm putting a little more in the middle. And what I'm going to do last is on my trees, I'm gonna wipe my brush out a bit. I have a lot of dark in that brush now. And I'm gonna come into this nice red. I may even add a little yellow since I have a lot of that dark in the brush. I didn't take too much time to uh, clean it out. And we have a nice orange, so we'll see how that looks. It's a dark orange. And I'm just gonna come in and put a little bit here and there for another color. There we go. Again, on the bottom. Get another color in there. Now, I think, I'm gonna come over to this yellow, tap in a little yellow, and really kind of put a few highlights in. Little yellow on the bottom. And like I said, I'm going to, I'm gonna distort the painting so it looks like a nice reflection. So here we go, I'm taking another two inch brush and this is the scary part, right down in the middle. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna distort my mountains first a little before I go onto those trees so they don't mix together. I'm just gonna pull down this mop brush very gently. And this is what's going to make the reflection in the water look more of a natural reflection. See how nice and smooth that got? Okay, here we go. Last step. Now to distort the trees. Here we go. Pulling down, this is scary. I'm just pulling down, pulling down very gently. I'm not pushing on the brush at all. Pulling down. Got a little blue in there, that's okay. I'm just going back over it a couple times, blend it in. Okay, now at home you can go ahead and add some simple birds. Lots of extras you can do to a painting like this. So all I would have to do is sign it and it would be done. So this is it for my, for my painting today. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll tune in again. And you can come and join my Facebook group on Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. And thanks again. See you soon.